beginning of these sessions. Uh, we've been running these Sunday papers for um, uh, since the amazing meeting. We've brought them, and I'm very pleased to have these Sunday papers here at SciCon now. Uh, I've been running them for uh, uh, 15 years, and um, I decided, just for the fun of it, to take one of the slots. I haven't done that before, so please indulge me. I want to tell you, this is a conference, SciCon is a conference dedicated to science and skeptical inquiry, and I think that is really important that uh, in kind of the essence of Carl Sagan was, of course we're going to combat pseudoscience, but we also want to s explain to those that maybe haven't found that um, excitement about science. We want to show them that the universe is an amazing place. And to that end, I've got a little social media experiment going on Instagram. Now, if you're not on Instagram, this is a show of hands. Who's, who goes to Instagram this once a week? Anybody? So it turns out that uh, maybe I'll, I know why, and let's talk about that a little bit. My, my goal here is that Instagram is, uh, there's Facebook is, I think, one and a half billion monthly users, of, uh, and then we have Instagram at one billion, and Twitter, for instance, is at 300 million average follow, uh, users per, per, app, per, per uh, month. And so can we get people to look at something scientific? Uh, maybe once a day on Instagram and be inspired by science. And that's kind of my goal. So I'm going to talk about, can the public, is the public willing to believe that physics is fun? And that here's two words that usually don't, most people don't associate, physics and fun. So I've kind of welded them together in one word. They're physics fun. That's the tag name. The at sign means Instagram. So uh, a little bit about me. I, I, I am a physicist. Uh, I, I used to work at Particle Accelerator. I was part of the team that helped discover the top part. That's a really the only thing was one of 400 members on that. Um, I worked in that area for about 20 years. I was also um, been a press professor at um, Fresno State, and this is my 20th year teaching there. And the things I love to teach about, of course, are critical thinking, physics, rational skepticism. I've been known to participate in putting on these various conferences. Uh, but I don't want to talk about any of that today. I want to talk to you about toys. <laughs> so that's me as a graduate student. And uh, I went into a toy store one time. It was actually a kite shop in Occidental, California. And they had this marvelous amount of like wood toys. And I realized at that time, so I was just starting to teach physics to, uh, uh, in the classroom. And I realized that these would be wonderful demonstrations in front of the class. You know, there's always kind of uh, physics demonstrations have always been a part of the pedagogy of teaching physics. But I thought bringing toys in might make it more familiar, or might make it a little more interesting for the students. It was pretty successful. So I bought these under that guise, but it turns out it became kind of an obsession. And over the years, I've found things that would be used in the classroom more and more. And yeah, so, uh, so what I, I had these things, and, you know, anytime you're a collector, you might have this idea that uh, someday my collection is going to be so important that maybe it'll be like in a museum somewhere. Right? Like they'll, they'll have it behind glass, and of course that would be terrible because most of these things you need to manipulate them. And so, um, think about it, if these were actually successfully one day put into a museum, who would see it? Maybe 10 people a day? I know there's like these museums of the salt and, shaker, salt and, pe salt and pepper shaker museum of the world. I'd pay to see that, right? But how many people could you get, right? So what I've done is I've taken these and used the format of Instagram the, the format there is you have one minute. You can put a one minute video on there, it's a cap. So you have 60 seconds to tell your story. And I've been taking this collection of mine and uh, putting one short snippet, one, one thing a day. And so what I like to think of this is it's a use of social media as a museum of science and math. And my tagline is physics describes the real magic of the universe. So that's what I'm trying to accomplish here. Um, so, videos are a short format. Here's one of my favorite toys. As you saw, that I still have it from my graduate school days. It uses magnets to have actual levitation. Um, I've been posting daily since October 2015. Yeah, got to show you no strings attached. <laughs> Back to my uh, magic friends. Uh, 900 plus videos so far. The constraints of Instagram, as I mentioned, is the video length is 60 seconds. Uh, once you upload it, you can't edit the video. You got this square crop format, but it's, it's still, I think, an interesting meaning. So, uh, so the results so far, I started off back in uh, uh, really posting on a daily basis, and I had about 5,000 followers. Something went viral on Reddit, and suddenly my followers doubled in one day. It was pretty amazing. And then a few more instances of that happened. I thought, wow, this is really catching on. And the trend has just continued. 
So I'm, I'm pretty pleased with this. People actually will tune in, more and more followers. As of today, I have uh, 1,660,436 followers. Wow. For who's counting? <laughs> And they're actually pretty well received. The average likes per post is 31,000. 31,000, you can move a little heart, right? And uh, average comments, about 150. Um, the most liked post ever had 151,000 likes, and my most viewed post was 8 million. Here we're seeing this beautiful uh, Galton board, they call it. This is where balls bounce around through these pegs and randomly distribute. It kind of shows you kind of this real life version of the central limit theorem, how things will always try to match that curve. It's just a, a lovely device. So, one of my inspirations well, is Carl Sagan, obviously, but my other is Frank Oppenheimer. Do you know Frank? He's sometimes called the uncle of the atom bomb because he actually is brothers to you know, Robert Oppenheimer, famous Robert. And, but what he's really famous for at this point is uh, developing in the most, one of the most phenomenal museums of science in the world. Uh, he says, in the course of some wandering, I come into something delightful or exhilarating or beautiful or insightful. I want to tell someone else what I found. More than that, I want to bring them along with me to share what I've discovered. And he lived it. He made the exploratorium. Show of hands, have you been to the exploratorium? Yeah, it's, it's, it's this hands-on where the experience is to, to bring you into the science. You're investigating it. Oftentimes, there's not a lot of explanation. You find out what the phenomena is there and be surprised by it. Open in 1969, it's still going very, very strong today. My favorite thing, though, is his thoughts about what do I do at a science museum? And there's this underlying principle that I try to put in to my online museum, and that is nobody ever flunked a science museum. <laughs> I love this. He just was so candid about this. Uh, so. When I do show something, I try to adhere to some of the principles of the exhibits at the sportarium. No hidden wires, nothing hidden. If they have some devices that help propel it, it's all put in plexiglass and made clear. So here we're seeing what I like to call visualizing the invisible. There are magnetic fields, and we can visualize them by these chaining up of these uh, floating magnetic particles or iron particles in this liquid. Um, so I try to get the full text of the object, move the object, not the camera. I've got a few strategies that I have there. Um, this is, this is my, one of my favorites. This is a, called a specular hologram. You can get this. This is by Tristan uh, Duke. Uh, if you buy this particular one, so the point source of light. This one I had a little bit of sound on there. Luckily, it's 15 seconds, so. No copyright issues in French. Uh, but the philosophy is, when I make these proposals, the Instagram, uh, it's a visual media, so my philosophy is to be concise in the statement, to, to only put like some keywords, maybe three or four sentences, and my, my goal is that there's so many excellent pages out there that if they just know the keywords to Google, they're gonna turn up and find some good material, and I test that out before I make my post. That's the caption. So let me just share with you a couple of my favorite toys. Um, this one is called a tippy top. And so basically it's kind of a spherical shaped top. And if you spin it, um, it, it behaves differently than you might expect. So it always basically oh, wow. spins up right onto its stem like that. Right? So this is uh, remarkable physics. And the basic principle here is that spinning things behave differently. They just do. Um, here are, I love this photo from 1951. You have two of the giants that invented quantum mechanics. Wolfgang Pauli and Niles Bohr, and here they are playing with a tippy top. And just a uh, to be. Right? So that's, and of course now I'm a collector, so I can't just have a tippy top. If they come in varieties, I want the smallest tippy top that can work, and I want the largest tippy top that can work. It's, it's part of my TV. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, there it goes. Finally pops up. So they all work. And of course, as it's, it's a, these are described in physics as a non integrable non-linear dynamical system with at least six degrees of freedom, which means it's kind of hard to explain. But, <laughs> a little bit challenging. But it turns out, how does it work, right? Well, at least and, uh, it, it's somewhat spherical shaped, and you know, we physicists like to make approximations with spheres. This, for instance, is a field of physics cows. <laughs> I knew this crowd would like that. 
And so, again, spinning things operate differently. And so, if you have something like a top spinning, it already has a uh, moment of inertia about this point. And so, as anytime there's a spinning top, it likes to precess like this. But this doesn't have a point, so as it precesses, it hits a little different part of the top, which pushes with some torque. Now, if something's already spinning here, and then the friction with the table wants to spin in another direction, those two spins add together and they make a third spin, which flips it over. And that's the simple explanation, or at least the first pass. And we can take it further. But, um, <laughs> but there's a few things. So this goes back. People publish papers on this. Here's a paper in 1960 in the American Journal of Physics, a very respected journal. Um, and it should, this guy used carbon paper to show that, indeed, the top actually changes its rotation axis as it flips over. And he, he did it, and he published it in this fine journal. So there's a lot of fun there. So um, a friend of mine, Ken Brecker, uh, came up with this one. And you might have noticed this phenomenon if you were trying to football or an egg, you spin a hard boiled egg, it'll always spin up onto its long axis, which is pretty neat. And so that's another variation on the same principles. The spinning things somewhat behave somewhat differently. Now, before I finish telling you that story, let me tell you this story. Um, this is a solid chunk of copper. This is uh, actually meant to uh, carry about 1,000 amps of current. So there's a water channel that runs through to keep it cold from melting. I, I got a chunk of it. It turns out that's a magnet. As you know, magnets don't stick to copper. But look at this. The magnet seems to kind of traverse down slowly. By the way, that's a piece of magnet view film. It kind of shows you the magnetic fields. And so you can kind of see the magnet drifting down that column there. So interestingly, you probably know that if you move a magnet next to some wire, it causes a loop of wire. It'll cause electrons to flow in that wire. Of course, if you have, this is what the top down means. You notice it's not touching the sides at all. It's like falling through molasses. So the thing here is if you move a magnet next to some coils of wire, it'll induce some current in that wire. That's how we get most of our power. Uh, although, as soon as you have a current induced in a wire, it makes its own electromagnetic field. It makes an electromagnet out of that wire. So the falling magnet turns that chunk of copper temporarily into a magnet that repels it and keeps it from falling as fast. It's a fantastic thing called Lenz's Law. Charlatans use it to try to think that they have uh, over unity devices and things like that. But here, we're going to take a A made out of a conductor, and we're going to spin a couple of magnets underneath it. Now, as you know, copper or brass is not magnetic, but if I spin those two magnets with a magnetic stirrer under there, it'll create a magnetic, an electromagnet into that uh, brass object, and it spins it right up and has an effect on it. This is actually made famous by Tesla himself. It was called Tesla's Egg of Columbus. And he had this egg dancing around, and it's what inspired Westinghouse to go with AC over DC. Or mm. I'm not sure. I know there's this movie coming about this next month. I wonder if they're going to feature the egg of Columbus, the Tesla's egg of Columbus. So um, let me just share with you some of the things that have happened since I've had this thing up. Uh, so again, what's with this, right? So it turns out I come from a family that can be described as hoarders. Uh, <laughs> and this is way my channeling my hoarding instincts into something positive for the world. So I, that's how I rationalize it. Um, but it may be... Uh, so, <laughs> this is my grandfather, Bill Buley, phenomenal guy. He is self-taught uh, high school, didn't complete high school, self-taught engineer, worked at Burroughs Electronics Company in, in Pasadena, California before he retired. And yeah, he wore that every day. Um, <laughs> and his garage was full of amazing broken components, TVs, electronics, and really, really inspiring. Matter of fact, here's a bench circa 1980 of my grandfather's shop, and yes, that is electronics in a, in a, in a can of ham. Uh, <laughs> a Faraday case, there's some serious physics here. But yeah, so he's my inspiration. Also took me to, a, 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 when I was in, a, I think, fifth grade, we went to the local city college, and he took me to a lecture by none other than Carl Sagan. Wow. Fantastic, kind of awesome. my inspiration. So, um, so what else has happened? Well, a question would be, well, who's following me, right? I got 1.6 million followers. Turns out Instagram does not make it easy, especially after the Facebook debacle that helped the election and stuff. They made it really hard to find out who was following who. And so I did find out that Adam Savage follows me. That's really nice. He commented on my post. So that's, that's just a good feeling. Um, turns out that Neil Patrick Harris has been following me for a long time. It's nice to see that. Um, any Pierce the Veil fans out there? 
It's not many. Pierce the Veil is a band that's quite popular with the youth. I, my daughter, um, my stepdaughter, Letty, uh, went to see their concert. I went with her as a chaperone. It was a pretty good band. They were pretty good. Um, then I came home and found out that the lead singer of Pierce the Veil has been following me for months. It is hard to get that much stepdad cred, right? <laughs> <laughs> it was right? So, yeah, squee. She was like, what? She couldn't believe it, right? So, um, and then uh, I, one of my students showed me that Brie Lawson is following me. What could be more intimidating than the most powerful Marvel, you know, <laughs> superhero following you? Well, maybe something slightly more intimidating. So this happened, uh, I can even look at analytics, and here's the point where suddenly right here, um, I got a bump, oops, sorry, go the right way, and uh, what happened here? I suddenly, so he said, hey, congratulations on the follow. I said, what do you mean, who's following me? Elon Musk. Ooh. He was in college on a post, right? So that was weird. And I go, only look, following he's 30. Only following 39 people. Wow. Usually these folks are following like, I don't know, hundreds. So that was kind of shocking. And then he did that thing with the FEC and he deleted his, his uh, Instagram account. Was <laughs> so, you know, but I still, after that happened, I was like, I don't know. What's Elon going to think of the Hood's post? I don't know. But here's the one he liked, which I thought was kind of weird. So there's a top. And this particular top has a magnetic tip, so the, the spindle of this top is magnetic. And so there's this interesting principle that can be shown here in Newton's third law. That oh, wow. It's quite expected, right? So uh, because the, the top is way more massive than the, than the paper clip, the paper clip's the thing that moves. It's, it's, it's Newton's third law. It's beautiful. And uh, yeah, this is the one that got over like 100,000 likes. And Elon gave me like a thumbs up. That's right. <laughs> Fun, fun. Um, so just a couple more for you. So it turns out I, I did kind of migrate. I do uh, my best ofs on Facebook and YouTube. I have somebody that makes compilations of my videos. And so YouTube sent me this silver bullet, which I'm quite proud of, the silver play button. Uh, you get it if you have 100,000 subscribers or more. And so we're trying to promote it on that as well. Um, but uh, uh, here's one that I may be most proud of. So this is a uh, work by a wonderful mathematician named Kokuchi Sugihara, uh, it's called The Impossible Era. Look at that, you try to turn it around, and it just won't turn around. <laughs> <laughs> and it's this wonderful illusion, you see, it's to the vantage point, it's the point of view that makes the difference here, right? Um, wait for it. <laughs> <laughs> and he's got a number of these, but it's so phenomenal. Uh, physics, uh, perception, it's all wrapped in there. So this was uh, posted, it went viral on Reddit, and it turns out people didn't believe it. People thought this was CGI. And so this might be my most proud moment. David's in the room. David, are you here? It's a fantastic talk. Anyway, I I'm on Snap. The, the physics was so magical they didn't believe it, right? That's, 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 that's just wonderful. So that's, that's my little story. Uh, thanks for following. I did that little rabbit hole. Uh, uh, thank you. Thank you so much. And, and ladies and gentlemen, I, can I please ask you for a round of applause for all the folks who presented? Potentially throwing it out there. Um, we, we, thank you so much for your attention. And uh, it's not in the schedule for some reason, uh, but we, two hours is a long time uh, to be sitting in your seats, and there's no scheduled break. So uh, I've made the executive decision. We're going to have a break. Yeah. And there's, um, just let so you know, uh, there is coffee out there. They have refilled. <laughs> I see you're rushing for that. Um, but we've been informed by the hotel they've never seen another group drink as much coffee. <laughs>